Hi there. I want to take this time to talk to you about angular velocity and linear velocity. And this is a concept that a lot of times a math textbook will just hand you a formula and ask you to use it. However, I have found those formulas to be a little cumbersome. Uh, for one, they only work when your angle is measured in radians. Um, and two, there's often a lot of um, conversion of uh, units behind the scenes that takes place. I've really found these problems to be easier just to approach them as a conversion problem in general. And really, if you track the units, uh, that does the entire driving of the problem, and, and it's pretty easy to follow along. Let's first make sure we understand the difference between angular and linear velocity. For both of these, we're talking about circular motion, so something that's moving along a circular path. And Basically, angular velocity is taking a look at how much an angle changes with respect to time. So as that, as that green line is turning, we're looking to see how much that angle changes with respect to time. Okay, so this is a change in angle over change in time. Okay. Whereas linear velocity, that's saying like, you know what, I'm looking at, say, a particle at the edge of the circle, and it's spinning around the circle. Linear velocity is going to describe how much distance I cover per unit of time as I march around the outside edge of a circle. So this is a change in distance over a change in time. And um, I have found personally that tracking that, whether I'm talking about how an angle is changing with respect to time or a distance is changing with respect to time, is really one of the first key parts of doing any one of these problems. Uh, you don't actually have to be told, hey, solve this angular velocity or this linear velocity problem. You're really looking more for, are they talking about how an angle is changing or some distance is changing? Now, a very common way to describe circular motion is in terms of revolutions. We hear that all the time, right? Revolutions per minute, RPMs. Um, and so the majority of problems you may run into will, will lead out with that. They will use possibly a revolution to describe how this uh, angle is changing or this object is moving around the uh, circumference of a circle. Now, it doesn't have to be described in terms of revolutions, but if you understand what we're going to do here, uh, if this makes sense, then it'll make sense no matter how the problem is uh, handed to you. So let's, let's get a little clarity on what we mean by a revolution. So a revolution, you know, is just one lap all the way around the circle. But there's two things we could be talking about here. We could be talking about in that lap, how does the angle change? And in that lap, how does the distance on the outside edge of the circle change? And so really, a revolution can be interpreted two ways, and it depends on what type of velocity you're talking about. If you're talking about an angular velocity, then I want to focus on how the angle is changing inside one revolution. And in one complete revolution, I know that the angle covered is 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. Doesn't matter which you use, radians or degrees, you just need to be consistent in the problem. Now on the other hand, if I'm talking about linear velocity, which uh, really should probably be called circular velocity, right? Because I'm not moving in a line. I'm moving along this circular path here. But linear velocity is going to track how much distance that object on the outside edge covers over time. And so in the case of linear velocity, one revolution is actually talking about the whole distance around the outside edge of a circle. So that's describing a circumference. which is 2 times pi times the radius of your circle. Okay, So a revolution can be interpreted as 360 degrees or 2 pi radians, but it can also be um, 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 interpreted as 2 times pi times the radius. It just depends on the context of the problem. Okay, But I think you will uh, find this little idea here if you can make sense of that and feel comfortable with that, I think these problems would feel A-OK -okay to you. So 
let's just come up with a quick example. Let's say um, let's say that a fan is spinning at uh, 100 revolutions per minute, right? 100 RPMs. Let's find the angular velocity Um, let's say in degrees per second. Okay. So what you want to look out for, for all of these problems, okay, is they're going to basically give you some starting units and some ending units, and our job is to convert our way there. So they do describe the motion of the fan. They start us by telling us this, that this fan spins at 100 revolutions per minute. That's my starting rate. That's the given rate. So let's start with that information, 100 revs per one minute. And now they do tell me that my final answer needs to be angular velocity in degrees per second. And you know what? They didn't have to use the words angular velocity. I know it's angular velocity when they talk about degrees per second because that's a measurement of an angle. Okay. So I need to end up getting some sort of degrees per second. Now, the conversions will do all the work for me if, as long as you carefully track the units. Watch how this happens. I need to convert and convert and convert. And basically, I need to turn these revolutions into degrees. And I need to turn those minutes into seconds. And once I've done that, I, I'm done. I've completed the problem. For some of these, it may require lots of conversion factors. For others, not so many. So let's just see. It doesn't matter which one you start with. Um, I've just developed the habit of usually getting rid of the revolutions first. So if I've got revolutions up top and I want to get rid of them because I don't see revolutions in my final answer, I'm going to put the units revolutions down in the bottom. And the units I do want in my final answer would be degrees. Can I link degrees to revolutions? Heck yeah. A revolution is 360 degrees. They're the same thing. So. I can say one revolution is the same as 360 degrees. Now, don't worry about plugging these numbers into the calculator. Oh, by the way, if you're a little rusty on conversions, a conversion factor carries a weight of one. The 360 looks different and, and one rev looks different, but they're the same thing, right? 360 degrees is one revolution. So in, in a sense, this has a value of one right anything divided by itself is one and that's why when I multiply it by my problem here I'm not changing the overall value I'm changing the appearance by converting the units but watch what happens the revolutions are now gone and my answer is now left in terms of degrees per minute and so I I'm halfway there I got the degrees locked in oops I don't need to do anything else there what I do need is I need to get those minutes and turn them into seconds. So again, don't use the calculator till the very end. Here you've got minutes in the denominator. So to get the minutes to cancel, I better put them up top. Uh, I want seconds left in my denominator. That's what I'm trying to get to. So then to make this a proper conversion factor, I need the numerator and denominator to have the same weight. One minute is the same as 60 seconds. So essentially that fraction carries a value 1, and I'm not messing up the problem by multiplying by it. But this will make the minutes cancel. And if you notice what you're left with, you have degrees over seconds, degrees and seconds. And that is what tells you when you're done. Okay. Once you get the units to match, you're done. Let's put this in the calculator carefully. If I did it all right, I'm getting 600 degrees per second. All right, so if that fan is spinning at 100 revolutions a minute, the angular velocity, the speed at which the angle is changing, is 600 degrees per second. Now, notice one thing I didn't use here, or they didn't even tell me. 
they didn't tell me how big the fan blade was. Is this a small fan blade? Is it a big fan blade? They didn't tell me the radius of this fan blade, right? Um, and that's because when you are talking about angular velocity, radius doesn't come into account. The only time radius would come into play is if you're talking about linear velocity, because then the bigger the radius, the bigger the circle. So you might have a small fan blade that's spinning or a really large fan blade that's spinning. Oop, you can't see that. Or a really long one that's spinning. And because the size of these blades are different, they will trace out different size circles. My pictures are terrible here, but basically the larger the radius, uh, it's going to affect how fast something around here has to travel to make one complete lap. So let's just do a linear velocity problem real quick. Let's say that a fan um, with a 10 inch radius is spinning at 100 revs per minute. I'll just use the same one. Let's say find the speed in miles per hour for a point at the tip of the blade. So you've got this fan, and again, forgive my crude picture here. Let's just say there's a blade and it's spinning around and I know how fast it's spinning. It's spinning at 100 revs per minute. There again is my starting rate. But this time they tell me the radius of this is 10 inches. And so they're describing the radius of this circular path that's being created. And again, they did not have to tell me find linear velocity. I did not need to be told that to figure out this problem because they asked me to find the speed in miles per hour. Miles is a distance. This is distance over time, so this is a linear velocity. It's going to be the exact same procedure. I'm going to start with the rate they tell me, 100 revs per minute, and I'm going to convert and convert and convert and convert until I'm left in miles per hour. And I just keep converting until I get there. So why don't I get rid of the revolutions first? How do I go from revolutions to a distance? I probably can't jump right to miles, but can I get a distance out of here? Yes, I can, because one revolution is the distance around your circle. So one revolution should be 2 times pi times the radius of your circle. And if you notice, the revolutions are now gone, and I am left with inches per minute. That's not quite miles per hour, but now I just need to convert my way to it. I don't know how many inches are in a mile, but I know that 12 inches is the same as one foot, and that gets the inches to go away, and now I am in feet per minute. I know that 5,280 feet are in one mile. That gets the feet to cancel, and now I'm in miles per minute. I want miles per hour. So the miles aspect is done. I need a little more room here, but I'm set with miles. Now what I need to do is I need to get rid of those minutes. So I've got minutes in the denominator on, over there. So I'm going to put them up top so they cancel. And I want to leave behind hours. And I know 60 minutes is the same as one hour. And now the minutes cancel. And the only units you are left with is miles per hour. That means you're done because you got you got the units they were looking for. Now let's quickly get our answer. Being very careful when we type all this stuff in to use parentheses in the denominator as needed. And if I did this all correctly, I'm getting that a point at the tip of the fan blade is moving at nine, oh, sorry, 5.95 miles per hour. Okay, I hope this helped. I really encourage you to use this conversion method and to really understand the how we can interpret a revolution. Uh, talk to you later. See you the next one.